This is episode 21 of the Growth Tigers podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21 of the Growth Tigers podcast. This week, we get to talk to Barry Doe of Timo.vn, the very first digital bank in Vietnam. Uh, he explains to us why Timo is considered a startup, even though they're very well funded and working closely with one of the big banks in the country. We also talk about what they're doing differently, what a digital bank can do for you in, in Vietnam and what it can't. And we also learn about some of his inspirations and motivations. So it's a good episode to start you off right after the Lunar New Year. Uh, give it a listen and let me know what you think. Thanks. Okay, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Growth Tigers podcast. Today, we're sitting here with Barry, uh, who is from Timo, and he's going to give us a little bit of an explanation of what Timo is and why it's important for Vietnam and for the future of Vietnam. So welcome to the show, Barry. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Uh, can you uh, tell us what is your role at Timo? Sure. Uh, I'm head of marketing for Timo. Uh, I'm actually also one of the first hires for the project itself. So even before we had a a partner bank even, we were building the business model. We were also researching the customers, etc. Yeah, so I've been here since the very beginning, I guess you can say. Okay. What exactly is Timo? <clears throat> well, Timo is a digital bank. There's many versions of digital banks around the world. Some are from the banks themselves. Others are independent companies that partner. Um, and we're that case itself. So we built up the whole front end. We're basically like the front end of a traditional bank. We white labeled VP Bank. Uh, so they hold all the money. We actually don't hold any money, but uh, we acquire the customers ourselves. We're basically a completely independent entity, entity, right? Uh, just using the VP Bank infrastructure. Okay. And what problem does this solve? Well, the biggest problem that we saw and uh, the founder, our main investor as well, is Don Lam. Uh, what he saw was that the need for a digital bank will eventually arise. And, you know, he's a financial guy. So he saw globally that this trend was happening and Vietnam was almost ready for it. Right. Uh, and then when he looked at all of the banks in Vietnam, he looked at their e-banking, their mobile banking. It was really poor, really badly done. Um, it's basically a bank taking their traditional products and throwing it into uh, a mobile app or throwing it online. So the user experience and everything is not good. You know, especially in the day and age where people are using apps like Facebook and Instagram, where usability is is like make or break, right? And so he felt the same. Uh, there's this potential, right, to build a really cool banking product, which could take over the market. Okay. What is your traction? Because you've only been around for about a year? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been with the project for about almost three years now. Okay. Um, but we didn't launch officially until May. So uh, the beginning of last year, we were piloting for a staff only. Mm -hmm. And then in May, we did our full consumer launch, right? So I can't disclose exactly how many numbers we have, but uh, we have millions of dollars in deposits and we have over, we crossed our 30,000 customer milestone already. Okay. Um, so for the next six months, we're looking to ramp up even further. Across a hundred thousand and plus. Okay, and where is where is Timo available? Uh, Timo, okay, so Timo is available in Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, right? Okay. Um, as a digital bank, we would love to be able to do a digital KYC. It's called Know Your Customer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a banking term related to the the regulation required to open up a bank account, right? Okay. So every market has different KYC processes. Um, in the U.S., I believe uh, BankMobile.com, they allow a selfie as your KYC right. and uh, they have a system that compares your ID with your picture and then there you go. Right. So they can go fully digital and acquire anywhere they want. In Vietnam, that's a bit progressive. So the government has not allowed that. Um, we still need to physically meet our customer, mm -hmm. uh, get a signature and take a photocopy of their ID. Okay. So that's why we're only in two urban centers now. So Ho Chi Minh and we just launched in Hanoi. Okay. So, but even if someone doesn't live in the city, they can come here and register and then go back to wherever they are. Sure. I mean, we're available to everyone that can make it to one of our locations mm -hmm. to do the KYC. Okay. So, 
What are the top three things you know about your customers so far? Well, <laughs> we have pretty good split of 50-50, uh, which is 50 under 30 and 50 over, which is a very okay. good split. Uh, you know, we knew off the bat that the easy acquisition will be the younger kids, like okay. millennials and first jobbers, et cetera, because they're the ones already using mobile apps and such, right? Um, but our core target has always been 25 to 40 plus, right? Because that's where the profitability kicks in, right? Uh, we generate a lot more revenue off of those customers. But the problem is in Vietnam, most people generally are have access to about three or four different banks, whether it be credit card or bank account. Um, so, you know, it's a harder job to convince the older ones, right? But they're coming on board, so that's the good thing. Okay. Uh, what is the advantage other than digital for Timo? Like, is there a, an interest advantage? Is there an ease of, I mean, what, what is the advantage you have over, say, another bank that has more locations, more um, prestige? Well, as a digital bank, the, the core objective that we want to do, whether it be from a branding perspective or product perspective, etc., is to digitize everything completely so that for us, we really don't want to have to meet our customer again. Right, we're a digital bank, so we want you to be accessing your money digitally. So that's the advantage that we have. Uh, we've optimized everything, including the uh, initial join process, completely digital. So in the features we have in app and things like that, right, make it very easy to use. Mm -hmm. So I give you one example, right? I mean, I don't know why other banks have not implemented this, but we made it super easy for you to just send money to another person that's also using Timo. All you need is one piece of ID. It could be email address phone number um, or their card number, right? Okay. But, you know, I mean, that's one little small thing, but nobody's done that yet. We mm -hmm. don't know why, but we, we for us, it's super easy to do. We know our customers. We just link them together. Right. And so, you know, little small tweaks like that, we make it much easier to use your bank account. Okay. Uh, if you compare, let's say, Citibank, if I want to send to another Citibank customer, I still need all those details, which I don't know why. You know, Citibank should know the other customer based on one ID. Okay, so um, for your customers who have this ease of access and everything digital, what are the financial products that you have right now for them? So currently, when you open up a Timo account, you get three accounts. Uh, we have two current accounts. Uh, one is just your regular spend account, we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, what your debit card is tied into. And it allows you to do things like, you know, pay your bills, top up your mobile phone, transfer money, you know, things like that, right? Just standard banking. Uh, and then we have another current account, which we call Goal Save, and it allows you to earn a little bit of more interest. Um, it earns 1% interest per annum. Um, it's liquids, meaning you can move money in and out anytime you want, but it's not tied to your debit card. So we use it as kind of like a, a planning tool. Mm -hmm. So you can set up a goal, set up automated contributions from your spend account into that one. Mm -hmm. And then the third product we have is term, uh, term deposit. Okay. So term deposit is your standard, you know, uh, fixed duration term uh, savings product. So you can pick three months, six months, 12 months uh, and get the rates from VB Bank that we have. Um, we're actually about to launch our fourth product, which will be uh, Timo MasterCard. It's a 0% foreign exchange fee MasterCard. So we are actually the first in Vietnam, maybe the first in Asia to offer a 0% foreign exchange fee card. For us who may not know exactly what that means, can you explain? Sure. Um, most Whenever you make transactions on a credit card overseas, there's always a foreign exchange fee, right? So it goes anywhere from 1% to 4%. So in Vietnam, for example, Citibank is charging 4% per transaction. Okay. So that's above and beyond. So they have the con first they convert it into the local currency, right. and you often lose a little bit on the exchange rate, right? But then they tack an extra certain percentage as a foreign exchange fee, right? So we do not have that fee at all. So it's it's potentially a big savings for people who travel a lot. That's great. It's fantastic, especially for the more of the young kind of travelers who are looking at getting overseas a lot more. Yeah, I mean, we looked at the data initially um, when we were planning this product out, and we noticed that year on year, it's almost like, uh, I think it, I believe it's 130% growth year on year of travelers to Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, now, Singapore is a very good barometer of traveling uh, outbound travel for Vietnam because it's a very high ticket destination. It, it's not like, for example, Thailand. Thailand's right. a lot cheaper, right? Singapore, you're looking at a hundred bucks a night for a hotel and that's like in Chinatown, right? right. So uh, when we see that kind of growth in such a expensive market like Singapore, 
we knew that you know tr- Vietnamese people are traveling a, a lot mm-hmm. more. They have a lot more disposable income, mm-hmm. right? And if you look, uh, Boston Consulting Group released a study. They said that Vietnam has the highest MAC class, mass uh, affluent class, and is expected to double by 2020, right? So you know, with the growth of this mass affluent class, will also come the growth of travel, outbound travel, right? So that's why we introduced the zero FX fee. Okay, fantastic. So when talking about a bank or bank services, on a personal note here, mm-hmm. I, I I like to look at two things of main interest for me. One is security, mm-hmm. and the second is uh, integrations, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm going to be using a digital bank, then it makes sense that things I do online, maybe offline. The easier it is for me to integrate with them, the better the bank is for me, mm-hmm. right? Movie tickets, show tickets, all these things. Mm-hmm. So can you first go over a little bit about um, the security of Timo? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, especially considering all the traditional banks here. And then, you know, you have the tokens, you have all these other things they do. Um, and then also then some of the integrations you have now or that you will have soon. Okay. Well, um, from a security perspective, um, because we're not actually holding the money, Right. Uh, the money is sitting with VP Bank. So they have their own security in place for that. Right. Uh, what we have is an API to their banking, uh, core banking system. Right. So I won't talk about that part because that's the VP Bank yeah, part. Right. Sure. And, you know, obviously they're a bank. So yeah. they have pretty good security. Um, on our side, uh, we what we do is we have security consultants that are continually pen testing. So we yeah. hack ourselves basically right. to keep it simple, right? Constantly um, to make sure that there's no holes in the system um, because they can still hack into, for example, they can hack into the Timo account and then start transferring money around, right? right? Something like that, right? Um, so we do protect that. Uh, from a customer perspective, when we have a login, so obviously you have to log in. For the mobile app, we have a login and a four digit pin. Okay. Um, we have remote, whether it be on the web app or on mobile app, you can lock or unlock your card at any time. Mm-hmm. So in case you happen to lose your card, you can lock or unlock it. Um, all transactions have OTP, which is a one-time password. So um, we have some settings where if it's a f- someone you send to frequently and it's under a million, you won't get an OTP mm-hmm. if you turn that setting on. Right. But all transactions have a four-digit OTP that we send to your mobile phone. Okay. So um, on the OTP, mm-hmm. um, assuming that I have a phone with the app, it's my daily phone, mm-hmm. uh, the, the OTP goes to the same device. Mm-hmm. So in the case that I say I'm making a transaction, but maybe I've lost my phone, maybe it could be a fraudulent. I mean, how do you protect against having the app and the sign in on the same phone as the OTP would go to? Well, we also have the web app. That's why. right? Uh-huh. So you can still if you feel that at any time the mobile app, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. You can go into the web app, which is, you know, your Internet banking, mm-hmm. traditional Internet banking. Um, the thing is, we can't protect against you losing your phone. Right. Right. But what we can do is put measures in place for if you lose your phone. Right. So OTPs can be sent also, um, well, as a push, but if you lost your phone, then yep. that doesn't help. Um, but you can also get it as an email, mm-hmm. right? And there are settings there which you can pick to choose how you want to receive your security notifications. Okay. All right. Fantastic. I mean, that sounds, you know, comprehensive. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you have the penetration testers who are looking for different exploits that mm-hmm. uh, you can then patch, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, we've been, uh, normally, you know, we have the marketing site and then we have the actual banking product, right? right? And our marketing site generally is, you know, you can hack it, but then you wouldn't get anything out of it. But we did start to notice people starting to hack our web join. So you sign up online, you give us your name and email. Mm-hmm. So we noticed that uh, they started to hack just that part to get unique links, right? right. And so we had, right away, we implemented CAPTCHA. Right. Um, then we noticed that they got the unique link, and then they kept doing things with that one unique link. So then we also implemented, you know, um, four tries, and then your link is no longer valid, right? So, you know, every day there's new threats, but we're sure. very quick to move on them because, you know, we are a startup, right? So right. we can move a lot faster. Okay. We're going to come back to that point about uh, Timo being a, a startup. Okay. Um, can you talk about the integrations a little bit? Sure. Um, well, currently our integrations include uh, paying... A, Topping up a mobile phone. So that could be any of the providers currently. Uh, you could do it. You could top up a prepaid or a postpaid. Mm-hmm. So prepaid is when you get a scratch card, yep. right? Uh, so you can top up anyone in your phone book. Uh, you can also do the same for um, 
postpaid. So even if someone gets a regular monthly bill, you could still top them up. And at the end of the month, they'll get like a discount. Basically, it's almost like credited to their account. We also have a pay your electricity bill, pay your water bill, pay your internet bill. And we are planning to add a lot more of those billers on there as well. So this is inside of the, the mobile app? Yes, correct. Um, is this also, can you set up auto pay on this? Uh, no, uh, because the thing is that requires an integration with the provider. Uh-huh. And often the providers don't have that feature. Okay, they're, not, they're not there yet. Yeah, they're not quite there yet. Although we do have a few ideas because what happens is you call their API and then they return something. Right. So it could be, yes, there's a bill. Here's the bill or no, there's no bill. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we share that with our customer. Right. Um, what we were one thing that we've been discussing is whether or not we just auto pull every day, mm-hmm. and then that way when a customer opens up their app, they'll see that there's a bill, mm-hmm. right? But again, it requires it's a little bit tricky because we're doing it on behalf of our customer, right? So you know, mm-hmm. do we really want to go down that path? Right. Uh, should we tell them in advance? Things like that, you right? Know, so, so this also goes down the road of kind of intelligence in your system, right? Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about kind of uh, entertainment integrations. You know, tickets, movies. Things that if you're living in Singapore or um, in the States or, you know, Europe, mm-hmm. European countries that you'd expect a digital bank to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's what's going on there for Timo? Yeah, we don't have any plan for that because, again, it has to do with the providers here. Yeah. Right. Um, we can build everything on our on our side. But if the other side doesn't have any sort of APIs or anything we can tap onto, then we can't offer. So, for example, entertainment tickets right now, there's still a few companies that offer ticketing services, right? right? Um, And even the biggest one, Ticketbox, we are working with them all the time, Mm -hmm. but they're not ready to handle it, right? right? Because a lot of um, online businesses here are still cash payments, right? right? So it's very difficult for us to create an integration in-app for that. Now, movie tickets is a different story. You won't get that level of integration in mm-hmm. Vietnam. Not yet, at least. Okay. All right. So let's talk about Timo as a startup. Okay. Um, why do you define it as a startup? Well, I mean, we are a startup in the sense that when we started off, there was only, there was one other person, Justin, Justin Myers, and then me hired, and then Claude, right? So there's the three of us sitting in a room, building the business model and all that stuff, right? Uh, the reason we're a startup is because uh, we're a startup, but a funny startup because we were founded by the venture capitalists, mm-hmm. right? So uh, Don Lam is the founder and CEO of Vina Capital, and he had a vision, and he brought together a bunch of other investors, and they put the money into this project, right? right. So we're based, we're, we're funded by them, right? Um, now we're a digital bank, so uh, why are we a startup? The reason is because in Vietnam you need a banking license to hold money right so we realize you know that's almost impossible to get so we have no choice but to partner with the local bank so we sit under them so the reality is legally we're actually just a product of vp bank mm-hmm. on paper right? right but in actuality as you can see with our office we operate completely independently except when it comes to certain things like uh, legal uh, risk compliance things like that right we work closely with them but we work independently of them would you be seen as a, a competitor to the traditional banks? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, we can see already that some of the banks have taken a knee-jerk reaction mm-hmm. to Timo. So some of them have copied our branding. Some of them have copied our messaging. And even one of them has copied one of our products. They called it Goal Saver. Okay. So <laughs> rather than Goal Save, it's Goal Saver. So, right. you know, um, we definitely are may having an impact because... Uh, the way we built the business up was not like how a bank would do it. A bank would look at it like, here's my product. How do I digitize this? Right. We didn't do that. Instead, we said, okay, what is it that our customers need? Oh, they need a current account. Right. Okay. So how do you use a current account? Well, you use it like this, 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 this. And then we built it up according to those findings, okay. right? Which is a kind of like opposite approach, you know? Uh, in fact, we didn't even know what products we were going to have until we did the research of what does a person need in their day-to-day life, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why we didn't launch with a loan product. Mm-hmm. We didn't launch with uh, overdraft and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. We just launched very simple with a current account and a credit card right? okay. and term deposit. Yeah. Okay. Most banks that, that I know of, they have the savings side to provide for the, the lending side. Correct, yep. And it sounds like all of your products thus far are on the, on the savings side. So how does that business model differ for Timo? Well, the thing is, uh, traditional banks, what they do is, uh, you know, as you were mentioning, it's basically uh, their NIM, 
right? Net interest margin. So that's the difference between interest paid out, which is the savings, right. and uh, interest collected, which is the lending, right? Uh, so our business model with VP Bank is we share the NIM. So we don't need to balance the two sides, okay. right? We're basically acquiring deposits for them, and then they're doing their own thing to balance their books, right? Okay. However, you know, there is revenue to be made on lending products, right? So we are about to offer a few. Okay. So, for example, we will have overdraft soon. But due to some complexity with how it's shown in app, we actually came up with an idea and innovation where we're not even going to call it overdraft. Emergency funds. Right. So you can apply for emergency funds. We'll give you another account, which you just move money into your spend account. Mm-hmm. It's still overdraft. It's right. just the way that you look at it, the customer looks at it, mm-hmm. is different. Okay. It's almost like I have $5 million and I need seven. Oh, my emergency funds has two mil. You just move it in and there you go. Okay. But that's overdraft. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So you, you'll find other ways of kind of doing these, these different revenues, right? Yes, correct. So, I mean, just to go back to your question, um, we don't need to balance the books like banks need to, like banks do, but we will offer those other products because of the revenue. Mm-hmm. You make more money. Right. right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yes and no. <laughs> what are the next six months of development for Timo? What are the expansions? What are the products that people can expect to see? Okay, so um, talking about expansion first, we launched in Hanoi and we will be uh, launching in Kanta because uh, we actually secured Series A investment. It's actually uh, ink is drying. A payment request is being made to fund our account, right? right? So I can't announce anything yet, Mm -hmm. but we do have a big Series A investor in the insurance space. Mm -hmm. So it's a very good kind of marriage. Obviously, banks and insurance, they always work together, right? So we have a big investor. And we will expand to Kanta with them. And after that, even Dena. Okay. Uh, basically, with that partner, wherever their office is, we can put a little mini hangout right. inside. Right? Yeah. Um, so that's in terms of expansion. In terms of product, we are going to slow down product a little bit. Um, we started and we launched all these great things uh, like that Timo to Timo transfer. We call it Timo Me. Yeah. We just launched payment requests. So these are just small features in the product, uh, existing product. So we have payment requests. So I can send you a payment request. Right. And the next evolution of payment requests will be bill split. So payment request, but to five people, okay. yeah, basically, right? Um, so that will be a little bit further down the line. Uh, and then we're going to focus on our revenue products, which is overdraft is the first one. Loans should be coming along along soon. But anytime we have a product, which is related to our partner, our partner bank, generally takes a long time, right? So um, the other thing we do is we work with other partners. And since we now have a big investor, we're going to start to build out some insurance products. Right. So we phase them out so that it's a referral at first. In-app, you can just buy insurance, right? But later, we're going to actually have a tailored Timo insurance product for our customer. Right? And in terms of acquisitions, you know, the target is to hit uh, over 100,000. Uh, more by the end of uh, 2017, uh, we will officially launch our credit, our Mastercard. It already exists. I have one already, right. but we won't officially market it until April. Uh, quick question for accessibility: Are all the Timo services solely in Vietnamese, or are they also in English? No, they're in English also. Everything. So, you know, based on the language setting you set in your app, mm-hmm. we will send you communications in that language. Mm-hmm. Right. So, if you happen to leave it on Vietnamese, well, I can't help you. We're going to send you Vietnamese content. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but that, that's good for say you know expats and people who are, are staying here for mm-hmm. short to middle term. You know, looking for a bank, then the English language is really important. Yes, and not not all local banks take that and make that effort. Yeah, well, the, the, that's the good thing about us is you know as a startup and a startup founded by all foreigners basically, yeah. right? And all of the core team are foreigners as well. So English is actually the first language we draft everything in, okay. and then we translate to Vietnamese. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's let's change the conversation back to, to you more personally. Um, okay. You're you know, part of the founding team. Mm-hmm. How did you get to the point where you are here in, in, in Vietnam working on a startup of such a scale? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I have a very funny, long-winded story about why I'm here in Vietnam first. Okay. I was a refugee baby. So my mom left Vietnam when she was pregnant and I was born in Malaysia. Um, and after that, we were sponsored very quickly because, you know, my mom has a little small baby. So I went to Canada when I was about three months old, right? Uh, so I grew up in Canada, didn't know anything about Vietnam. Uh, I came here in 1999 and I thought, wow, this is interesting, right? Uh, 
right? I graduated high school, university. I always had it in my mind that I would travel the world and I'd stop off in Vietnam. And as I grew older, I couldn't speak to my mom anymore. Uh, she doesn't know English, and eventually I needed more advanced Vietnamese words okay. to be able to really talk to her. Yeah. So I decided to come back here. My grandma is here as well, was here. She just passed away. Uh, and my father's here. So it just seemed like the right thing to do. Come back here, hang out with my dad, hang out with my grandma, learn Vietnamese so I can go back and talk to my mom. <laughs> you okay. know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then I just, I mean, my next stop was supposed to be China. But at that point, China was already booming. So this is 2004. China was like really booming and... Mm-hmm. If I really wanted a opportunity, I realized Vietnam is the place to be, not China. China is kind of like on its upward tra- trajectory, right? right? So I stayed in Vietnam, uh, and then I, you know, I was teaching English at first, um, but I realized, you know, if I ever want to go back to Canada, I got to get a real job, right. <laughs> something I can put on my resume, right? So um, I was, I started off. Uh, it just happened that I started working at an advertising agency. And it's something that really fit because when I was in university, I used to throw little small drum and bass parties. I love drum and bass music, you know. Okay. So I used to organize my own parties, you know, limited funds. So you have to market, put the flyers in the right places, things like that. So I guess I always had it in me, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I was doing advertising and and marketing as well for the last almost 10 years now uh, in Vietnam. So I have no experience doing marketing outside of Vietnam. (laughs) Um, But in Vietnam, yeah, I've been doing been involved with many different companies, including uh, big international companies as well as big big local companies. And I I got my break, I guess, about two and a half years ago when I was a I was actually about to accept another job offer when I was offered this one. Okay. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. I'm a techie digital banking. Oh, my God. I never even thought about it. And I thought, well, do I take the other job, which is very cush and what I'm used to Mm -hmm. or take a challenge and launch something that is needed in the market right and so here i am <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds that's how it goes so here i am <laughs> yeah here here I am. okay so um i like to ask the interviewees on the, the podcast things that inspire them mm-hmm. so you know through this journey working on this project what inspires you to keep going through the tough places mm-hmm. um you know the late nights early mornings when you're trying to launch something that has such a potential big mm-hmm. effect what keeps you what keeps you going well, I mean, I guess, you know, this is going to sound very cheesy, but my wife is one one thing that keeps me going. Uh, when I met her, uh, I met her before I even started Timo, but she's always been a strong driver, pushing me to do more, you know. Uh, and then she actually pushed me to take the job as well. So, um, and, you know, she's always there to whip me, which is kind of uh, you know good and bad, you know. <laughs> I was asking, how's Timo? What are you doing? Blah, 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 right? But... You know, that, that's, you know, kind of a very simple answer. But in terms of what motivates me personally, right? Like, um, I've always believed in, number one is I love rooting for the under, underdog. I think it's very important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's where hope is. Hope is with the underdog. Hope is not with the number one football team. They're number one. They just have to maintain their number one. Right. But the young guy, you know, I'm a, I am love NFL, so I'm an Eagles fan. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they never get anywhere. But, you know, that's the thing. It's They're always the underdog every year. And, you know, you, you, you hope they get there. Yeah, that's right. Know? Right? So, you know, that's it. I mean, at the end of the day. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, so, do you have a mentor? A mentor? Yeah. Um... Mostly, uh, they would be the big guys, meaning like, okay. uh, I don't have thought a, leaders, thought leaders. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, the biggest one, right, is, is I really think, well, obviously, Elon Musk, super smart guy, but Jeff Bezos, okay. Amazon, yeah. brilliant guy. He may be not that nice as a person, mm-hmm. but what he's done for Amazon and the way that he thinks is very, very progressive and very forward thinking. Same thing with Musk. And I, I value that kind of thinking. So, in terms of a mentor for Timo itself, I think it would have to be the investors themselves. Okay. So we have some big guys. I can't name them, right? Sure. Uh, some are public, some are not. Um, but they're really big guys, very influential guys, and they've all had their say. And mm-hmm. each one contributed a bit in their own way, right? Mm-hmm. And being able to work under them is a huge privilege, right? Mm-hmm. And I would say, if anything, they would be my mentors. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they, they help you grow as a person as well yeah. as a professional? Yeah, correct. Okay. So... 
let's assume that some of our listeners are interested in learning more about Timo or opening an account. What what should they do? Timo.vn. Go to Timo.vn. It's all there. So <laughs> we have our videos. We have, um, you know, we have a blog. You can read the blog. Uh, we have, you know, basically all the information that I had just talked about and mm-hmm. more. We have an FAQ in there. We even have a video FAQ, dual language, Vietnamese and English. Okay. Um, so that would be your starting point. Okay. Um, Facebook, we have a Facebook as well, but generally is more related to promotions. And yeah. in there will be some product stuff, right? But the website will have all the information you need. Okay. And let's say for some reason, even though I'm looking at a digital bank, I don't want to go to the website. I want to go to the Hangout. Mm-hmm. What would I expect when I walk in? Well, the first thing that we did was we did research on how we should design our Hangout. Because as I said, you know, legally, we still have to meet our customer one time. So yeah. we had a, there were a few models. There's one is like kind of like the Apple store, right? Yeah. Uh, another one was more like, is like a regular bank, but modernized. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we did one which was cozy with sofas and stuff. And the one with sofas, it won, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we noticed that also Vietnam is very much a coffee culture. So, mm-hmm. you know, Starbucks is here. So right. that tells you something, right? Um, and so we designed a cafe, right? So the Timo Hangout is a fully functional cafe. Uh, if you're a Timo member, you get half price. Otherwise, it's priced quite high. We did right. that on purpose so that we can control flow and traffic. You know, if, I, I noticed today walking in, it's quite busy. Yeah, it's quite busy. So eventually, if it stays this busy, we might have to increase the prices, right? right? But if you're a Timo member, you're still 50% of that new price, right? right. Um, but <clears throat> so, you know, the reality is, it's impossible to do instantaneous account opening. That's not possible. Right. So we cannot say uh, to our customers, oh yeah, come to the Timo Hangout and you don't have to wait. That that would be a flat out lie. Right. Instead, what we wanted to do is, in, uh, instead of our customer arriving, taking a number, sitting on some cold, hard chair and waiting, we said, well, why don't we give them nice sofas, give them some chairs, give them Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. give them a menu with food and drinks and let them chill. Right. Then if you make them wait 15 minutes, it's okay, yeah. right? I mean, it, it's a different kind of feeling. Sure. And in fact, Timo means time and money, right? And so one thing we wanted to do is make sure that you're making the most you're making the most efficient usage of your time. And so we encourage people, obviously from an acquisition standpoint, yeah. <laughs> uh, we encourage people to come with their friends because then you can do two things at the same time. You can have coffee with your friend and talk about whatever it is, the latest mm-hmm. project, catch up on things, work, whatever, mm-hmm. and get your account opened right. at the same time. And we also pushed for cash deposit machines. So we're one of the few banks that have a cash deposit machine. Okay. So uh, outside and inside our Hangout, uh, both of them, the one in Hanoi as well, we have a cash deposit machine which allows you to deposit up to $100 million per transaction. Uh-huh. That's about four, uh, almost $5,000, right? And then that allowed us to eliminate the need for a teller. Right. Yeah. So we don't have any tellers. So when you go to our hangout, there's no tellers. Right. There's no glass partition. There's no number machine. Mm-hmm. There's no display with numbers. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It's just a cafe. Just a cafe. And in fact, people that walk by are always confused. If they don't know what Timo is, they walk by and they don't know what this place is. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank you, Barry, for your time. No problem. Thank you, Brian. And um, you know, I'll take another look at Timo. Maybe it'll be the bank of the future for, for Growth Tigers. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, we are the, our next step will be to uh, enter another market. That has always been the vision of our investors. So we will be, um, right now, we're looking for the next market to expand into. Okay. Right. So well, Quick growth. Uh, yeah, quick growth. So there's Thailand on the map, Philippines on the map. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me.